In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Greetings, beloved of the Lord. You are welcome. Today is Tuesday, the 24th of May, 2022. You are listening to Catholic Meditation with me, Father Blessed Amba Njume. The Church commemorates the feast day of the Blessed Virgin Mary, help of Christians. Good morning and thanks for joining us. Let us pray. Grant Almighty and merciful God that we may in truth receive a share in the resurrection of Christ your Son, who lives and reigns within the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. The first reading is taken from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 16, verses 22 to 34. The responsorial psalm is taken from Psalm 138. The response to the psalm is, With your right hand you save me, O Lord. The Gospel is taken from St. John, chapter 16, verses 5 to 11. I read from the Gospel. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, Now I am going to him who sent me, yet none of you asks me, Where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the Counselor will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convince the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment, of sin because they do not believe in me, of righteousness because I go to the Father, and you will see me no more, of judgment because the ruler of this world is judged. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The theme for today's meditation is The Holy Spirit comes to aid us in a special way. The Holy Spirit comes to aid us in a special way. Dearly beloved of the Lord, today's gospel episode is situated within the context of Jesus' last words to his apostles before his ascension. His days on earth are numbered. Soon, he will leave them for good. They won't see him physically any further. He is preparing their minds to accept this reality. The apostles are troubled. They are afraid and sad. John chapter 16 verse 7 And truly, we expect them to be. Who would be happy 
to hear such news. Imagine how we feel when we lose someone to death, never to see them physically anymore. But Jesus tells them that they should rather be happy that he is living. Do not let your hearts be troubled, he assures them. It is to your interest that I go. Because if he does not go, the Holy Spirit will not come. His going marks the end of an era, but ushers in a new era. What is the connection between Jesus' going and the Holy Spirit's coming? Can they both not be together and work together? Jesus has to go because his mission is complete. He came for a purpose for the atonement of sins. That he has achieved. The human race has been redeemed. That was the purpose of the Son taking on human nature. He has conquered death, the last enemy, and given us life. He has shown that he is the Lord and Savior. Now he must go. Jesus has to go because so long as he is there in person, the object of the disciples' faith would always be a tangible external person. That is not bad in any way. However, it means they would constantly depend on him and look up to him to answer their questions and save them from situations as was the case with the sinking boat. When they found themselves in that boat sinking, Matthew chapter 8, verses 23 to 28, they rushed back to him. They depended on him. Also remember that when they failed to cast out a demon in the gospel of Matthew chapter 17, they rushed back to him. They always went back to him because he was always there. They saw him, that physical person. Now, imagine there was no physical Jesus to look up to that would increase their faith and trust. With him by them, they will always run to him. They will not grow in their faith. In fact, Jesus' presence in some sense limits the depth of their reliance on God. Do you know that a child remains a baby when always by its parents' side? They cannot grow to maturity. They cannot take initiatives because they will always run back to their parents. But that moment their parents are taken away, they learn to stand on their own, on their feet, and to grow, making use of the advice and wise counsel their parents gave them. But with their parents always by them, they don't make use of the advice, because they always see their parents by them. But take them away, they begin to replay all the advice their parents gave them, then they begin to make use because they are now on their own. Jesus had to go because his physical presence in a way limited the number of persons he could influence. Unlike the Holy Spirit, who is spirit, but not physical, and so not limited to space and time. When he was with them in the body, Jesus could not be everywhere. Neither could he reach the minds and hearts and consciences of all persons everywhere, only those who saw him and heard him. But everywhere a person goes, the Spirit is with them. The Holy Spirit's own method after Jesus is different. He provides the ability for each Christian to have constant, personal, immediate indwelling contact with God. Instead of relying on someone outside of themselves, believers in Christ with the Holy Spirit can now focus on the voice of God inside of their hearts as He dwells in them. Confess John chapter 14, verse 17. For a time will come when true worshippers will worship in spirit and in truth. John chapter 4, verse 23. Believers of today, that we are, are fruits of the work of the Holy Spirit. We have never seen Jesus physically, yet we have come to believe in Him, thanks to the Holy Spirit working in us. 
deep in our hearts, we have built a relationship with Him and worship Him in spirit and in truth, not because of the physical person we have seen, but because of the love of the Holy Spirit that He has poured into our hearts. This, however, beloved, should not also lead us to think the three persons are separated or that the Holy Spirit was somewhere waiting and now just has to appear. No, the Spirit has always been there, just like Jesus had always been and existed before time. Jesus was always filled with and led by the Spirit during his public ministry. Simeon was led by the Spirit to the temple at the time when the child Jesus was presented. It was the Spirit that led John the Baptist into the desert. Jesus, before he began his public ministry, said, The Spirit of the Lord has been given to me, for he has anointed me. When the apostles went out baptizing the people, they received the Holy Spirit because they were baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit has always been there. Therefore, this statement of Jesus means, with him out of their sight, they will now feel the presence of the Spirit. They will see his great work and they will rely on him. His power and wisdom for understanding the scriptures and for their ministry in times of persecutions. So the Holy Spirit is called the Counselor, the Advocate, and the Spirit of Truth. You know, someone can be by you, but you fail to feel their presence or benefit from their worth because of another whom you see more so if the former is non-visible like the Holy Spirit. Now with Jesus out of their sight, they will appreciate even better the great presence and work of the Holy Spirit. The coming of the Holy Spirit is the fulfillment of the promise. Behold, I am with you always to the close of the age. Matthew chapter 28 verse 20. Jesus is leaving them physically, but he will continue to be with them to the close of the age because of the presence of the Spirit. Jesus is present in the Holy Eucharist thanks to the work of the Holy Spirit. It is the power of of the Holy Spirit that transforms the bread and the wine into the body and blood of Jesus Christ. So Jesus has gone physically, but he is present in the Spirit. May we experience the presence of the Spirit and enjoy the benefits of the Spirit, the wise counselor, the advocate, and the Spirit of truth. May our blessed mother, the help of Christians, intercede for us. The church has often experienced the powerful help of the mother of God in times of trials and persecutions. Pope Pius VII established this feast when he returned to Rome on the 24th of May in the year 1814 after a period of imprisonment and captivity. His safe release and return were attributed to the intercession of Mary, help of Christians. Through her intercession, may we pray for the presence of the Spirit in our lives and also to benefit from the great presence and work of the Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen.